again. Yeah. These statistics were shocking to me, disturbing. One out of every five, three, 13 and a half million poor children. But perhaps most troubling was that you said that you don't think people care about this issue. Well, I think that the issue now is that it's time of booming prosperity when we have the capacity to end child poverty, the capacity and the money to give every child health care and child care. Um, why aren't we doing it? And so that's what we've got to confront when so many poor children are living in families, playing by the rules, trying to make and meet, can't get wages that allow them to um, lift their children out of poverty, can't get health care, can't get health care. We need to say how are we going to take care of our children in this prosperous time. But what is, what's the answer to that you were telling me before we we went on that we need a movement in this country but people don't seem to be focused on it. Well, more and more, our 3,000 people are going to gather here in New York, and we're going to be insisting that all of our political leaders and others speak out and actually vote their talk for children, that we ensure every child health care, that we lift the wages of working mothers, that we end child poverty in this prosperous economy, that every state tell and make sure that children get the health care. Seven million could get health care right now. States and localities did it. We're going to be out there, and we're going to hold them accountable. You talk about this is the problem prosperous time and this administration talks constantly about the booming economy and their record on the economy. Has this administration let down the children of America? I think they have not led. They've got an enormous opportunity to end child poverty now that welfare is off the table. This administration ought to ensure every one of those children health care ought to ensure that we end child poverty, not just welfare, that adequate child care is gotten this year um, and that every child gets a head start. We've got the capacity if our president and Congress and governors would lead. And you mentioned that Head Start actually only serves half the children that it's capable of serving. Less than half the children, 7 million children who want to get health care tomorrow are not getting it. That's something the states and localities can do something about right now. You mentioned that the poor child is not who we in America think the poor child is. The stereotype is not that. The poor child is living in a working family, trying, struggling to make ends meet, play by the rules. Mostly of them are white. Most of them live not in inner cities, but in suburban rural areas and small towns. The poor child is us. Um, but they're working people mostly, and they're every American in every part of this country. You also call in this report, it's a call to arms really for America's mothers to get involved in the gun debate. Silence the NRA, get involved. You say it is all of our fights. It is all of our fights that a child is killed by guns every two hours. It cuts across race and class. Our children are not safe. And until the mothers and the grandmothers and other women stand up and say, we will not stand for the killing of children and we're going to protect children over guns, will we begin to not let the NRA be in charge of our nation's policies on guns? What about dads? Dads should be involved. Everybody should be involved. But you know, I think mothers who bear and nurture children and who have that extra responsibility have got to say just enough. We will no longer look on the killing of our children. You have been in this fight for a long time, out there on the front lines talking about it. Do you find a more receptive audience today? Do you feel that you're talking to deaf ears? No, I think that more and more people are mobilizing. We've got over 3,000 people coming here tomorrow. We're going to go back home. We're going to build a movement to leave no child behind. We're going to insist and vote that people who talk about children actually act for children. Very quickly, someone's watching this interview right now, wants to get involved, wants to do, what do they do? I think the first thing they do is to say, I'm going to mentor a child, I'm going to vote for children, get our voting record and see how the people they send to Washington and, you know, are doing for children. I think that each of us has got to make a commitment that we are going to stop the killing of children, that we are going to stop child poverty, that we're going to see that every child gets a healthy start. Write us, get our agenda and support us, but in your own community, let your political leaders know that you will no longer stand for the neglect of children. Marian Wright Edelman, always out there, always talking. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. And we'll be right back.